Hi everybody, um, here I am at Thames Reach with Jeremy Swain. That's it, yep. Yeah. And he's the chief executive and uh, we've been having a, a wonderful time just catching up. Um, and as you know, you're seeing several interviews from people here in Homeless Services. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, Thames Reach and uh, homelessness in London. Okay, well first of all, Thames Reach started in 1984. Um, we provide services to people sleeping rough on the streets, so we go out every night of the year, uh, getting to people on cardboard, under blankets in London, helping them off the street. I think you might be going out with us tomorrow. We're going to try. See what you can do. Um, we'll make sure it rains heavily for you, so you get a good soaking. Yeah. To get that authentic feel and the boom. I've already been authenticated um, already. Have you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, almost daily. Good, okay. <laughs> it's not easy like this in London in July, really. Um, so we go out on the street, we help people off the street, we have hostel accommodation for people, um, we have specialist housing for people with alcohol problems yeah. and drug problems and mental health problems, we have, uh, how, we have our employment schemes for people getting back into work, we have some day services, we've got a service here actually that you uh, took a quick look, quick look at, uh, which is helping people get back into employment, getting yeah. them skilled up. And um, we support people across London in their tenancies, actually. You call them apartments, don't you, in the States? But people move off the street into their own flats. And uh, our job is to make sure they stay in the flat, do well, move on with their life, yeah. reconnect with family and friends. All the things that get people back into yeah. the real world. And uh, in the end, it's about uh, somewhere decent to live, loving relationships, using your time well, all those kind of things. So now homelessness in London, because obviously yeah. you know some of the official statistics. Yeah, well the, the figures in London, uh, the last set of figures that came out only what the, a week or so ago, are not good. Big increase. Yeah. Last year, so 2011-12, 6,700, uh, sorry, 5,678, should be easy to remember, Five, six, seven, eight uh, people sleeping rough in London yeah. over that period. Now the good news is that over seventy percent of those people had one connection with an outreach team, and then they were off the street. Yeah. So the message is big flow onto the streets. Most people getting off the street very quickly, but undoubtedly an increase from the previous year, and that's yeah. not good. Now. I know they did a street count in New York in January of this year and I think they had 3,262 people on the street on any one night. Right. So our figure is a cumulative figure over the whole of the year. Any one night in London may be 500. Yeah. So that's the size of the problem. We're not complacent because we've got too many people. But on the other hand, it's a, it's a problem that can be tackled and the optimists amongst us, me being one, believe we can end Good. up sleeping. Good. So let's keep going with that. One of, one of the great things uh, about this organization is out of the 300 employees, 77 were former rough sleepers. Yeah, well actually former homeless people, some would have been rough sleepers, Other, others would have experienced a different kind of homelessness. Yeah. Um, but that gives me great pleasure. And uh, yeah, I've got, I've got, I think that's amazing. I've got one colleague actually, when he got the job here, um, the manager who uh, interviewed him came to me and said, Jeremy, he can't start yet, why should that be? One of these impossible questions, I don't know Petra, why is that? Yeah. Because he's still in prison. He came oh. out on day release, got the job, and he can't start for another three weeks because he's got awesome. a completed sentence. Awesome. So, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and he's turned out to be an outstanding worker, yeah. really outstanding. And so, that's a big issue, uh, a big issue. Yeah. Uh, we've got people who have done fantastically well after some pretty awful times in their life. But you can imagine when they talk about the fact they used to be a rough sleeper, the impact that has on right. the people they're working with. These are the ultimate inspirational yeah. role models. And occasionally you get a government minister, and we're coming to see us. And one we had was the shadow housing minister, a guy called Michael Gove. He's now the education minister, actually, in this government. And he was taken around by Paula, one of my outstanding colleagues. He's very bubbly and full of energy obviously very competent, around one of our hostels, and he said to her at the end, young lady, um, where did you start from? Where did it all begin? And she said, I slept rough. First, that's what I did, I was a rough sleeper. And this minister, you know, he visibly flinched. Um, but I didn't have to then explain to him how people can change their lives, because he had Paula to right, remind right. him about how it right. can be done. So, you know, these are highly competent people that have got a background yeah. that is actually a benefit to us. Right. And we asked them to bring that out in interview. And one of my colleagues, Chrissy, said it's the only interview she's been to when the fact that she used to use heroin was counting in her favour, not against. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we've, we've kind of inverted the whole Right, thing. right. That's and great. And I take enormous pleasure in that. Um, 
we were talking about homeless families and how the safety net is better here. Yeah. That you don't see homeless families yeah. uh, on the street. What what does the UK and London do to keep families from hitting the streets? Yeah, well, uh, many years ago now, 1977, some legislation came in that's been retained, which means that if, you're, if you've got a family, if you've got dependents, if you've got kids under the age of 16, then you can go to your local council when you're homeless, and they are required to provide you with some temporary accommodation, and ultimately some permanent accommodation. Right. Although the, the level of permanence yeah. of accommodation they now offer you is beginning to reduce, and it doesn't have to be for quite as long as it, it once was. Right. But let's not be too negative about those changes. On the whole, that's a really strong safety net. You're not going right. to end up on the street if you're a, a family right. unit. Similarly, for very young kids on the street, in other words, people under 16, you're not right. going to be sleeping rough. So looking at the statistics last year, going again to those statistics that have just come out, 2011-12, number of under 16-year-olds sleeping rough in London, one. Wow. Wow. One, one young person under 16, wow. which we are proud of. But as I said, numbers going in the wrong direction, right. so we're not getting everything right. We can learn from you yeah. over in in uh, We can all learn Canada from each other. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, I've based my work on um, was interactions uh, that Jeremy has had with some of our homeless friends who are not homeless anymore, but while they were still on the streets. Um, actually, I was hoping that this kind of interaction would happen in the states that there'd be a service provider like you and you're an executive and they would have regular interaction with people on the streets and um could you tell me a little bit about that and then uh you the mm -hmm. one uh, the the story you shared with me at yeah lunch. yeah well what can you possibly lose from having these contacts because you're talking with people who have been homeless have got the most immediate experiences and they can really enlighten you to what it's really like on the street um, and one of them i follow alexandra i followed her when she was on the street and she gave me some insight into some of the the tricks that people play on the street actually um, that were very very interesting and i learned a great deal about the way organizations work and the way that homeless people can manipulate the system sometimes actually so it's quite an eye opener and it wasn't all good in terms of right. the way the homeless people were um, were portrayed by her but she has been accurate on the other hand she was very fair and very very compassionate about people who needed help yeah, she... but she was she fascinated me and I really wanted to meet her and then one day one of the the main local authorities in London Westminster City Council asked me to verify one of their street counts which means I go out with an outreach worker and make sure when they're counting the numbers of people on the street, it's going to be an accurate return. Right. They're not going to try to make it larger. Cook or the books. Cook the books, pretend there's more fewer or, yeah. or more rough sleepers than there really are. And I realised I was going around the patch where Alexandra was sleeping rough. And as we got to her street, and I knew exactly where she was, there she was, head against her sleeping bag, and there she was with... Twitter. She was tweeting, yeah. Now, I noticed um, afterwards, I got, got home, got onto Twitter, as I do a lot, and she said... Um, uh, I met that Jeremy Swain tonight. It's like getting a getting a visit from the Queen, which I thought, which I um, uh, you know, uh, which I assumed wasn't because she thought I was camping it up. I think it's because she thought I was uh, eminent, and I, you know, yeah. uh, I made it clear to her that I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think I should be put in that category. But she right. obviously thought it was a um, a good visit, and um, I really enjoyed meeting her. Actually, the only thing about it I would say is there was. Well, the great thing about about Twitter is that you do feel very equal with the people you're right. tweeting with. Um, and she certainly gave me some insights that I wouldn't have got. So I regarded her as one of the most thoughtful um, uh, commentators on homelessness right. issues. That particular interaction, I'm warm in a coat and she's lying on the floor and... You know, I'm standing and she's down. There was something about it that made me feel slightly uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how she felt about it. I'd be interested to find out. Um, but then I met with her a couple of times over coffee to talk about yeah. a few things she's doing. Again, fascinating. And um, we're developing a big project in South London, and she came along to take a look at that. And I hope that she will be right. in some way connected with that project in the future, because for me, she has a, a lot to offer. Yeah. Um, and there's an awful lot of bullshit going around, isn't there, in the, on the airwaves? And I think some of the, the homelessness commentators, not all of them, but some of them are really cut to the chase. Yeah. Um, and I've got a lot to learn. Well, I, I've seen um, your interaction, how she, uh, you know, basically called you on some stuff, 
but did it in a polite way and you responded and you engaged in healthy dialogue and i went oh my gosh this is gorgeous mm. a, a a you know basically a ceo or an executive director which would be the equivalent uh, in the states having online dialogue with somebody on the streets that everybody can see it yeah. was gorgeous well she can really teach me about some areas where I, I just need a bit more information and one of the areas was around soup runs where I have a view there's too many soup runs coming into central London and I think she shared my view I did a little piece about soup runs and I was just a bit too sweeping um, I suggested that none of them were actually helping people to engage in services beyond getting the soup right and she said to me mostly right but there's one called Aslan that does engage has a really good interaction and then tries to connect people right. up so don't don't overdo yeah. you know the, the, the sweep of your your view right. you paint it um, with a big brush and the way she put it was very you know it's very compelling and very convincing yeah. so I conceded as you do when you know when you know that something has a bit more about something than you yeah. one would hope yeah, yeah. So, so what yeah. would you tell let's uh, what would you tell somebody else in homeless services about social media because many uh, organizations are closed and uh, they're they're scared to, to get on it for just that reason well there's there's a side of it you have to be a bit careful of because you can get a bit addictive but we we use it in order to raise the profile of what we're doing so here's an example at the moment we have a one-off initiative to end rough sleeping in a part of London called Lambeth, which as it happens is the borough we're in now. So an initiative to end rough sleeping. To do that, we need support from the public. So we have a Twitter line called Ending Rough Sleeping in Lambeth. We ask people to step forward to support us in whatever way they want to. Um, one of the ways they're, they're doing that is to let us know when they see a rough sleeper in their area. So wow. we can get out, meet them, help them off the street. So what we're doing there is building up community champions to support us using a very easy way in which they can access us immediately which is which is twitter now you know you don't have to stretch yourself too far i, I would say i would argue to see the benefits of that immediate connection right. um i think that twitter in particular it, you know it's short and sharp and to the point and the ending rough sleeping in lambeth uh twitter account is building up a lot of very healthy right. contacts so right. and we'll make if we can we'll make sure those individuals know what we're doing and become long-term supporters of Thames right. Reach. Right. Why would I not want to do that? Yeah, I, I agree, <laughs> I agree. I, it's, uh, it's what I've been, you know, my dream is uh, uh, virtual case management, actually, yeah. that we'd be able to provide services and, yeah. and use it as an outreach tool. Um, obviously, people here are, are uh, much more connected because you have good mobile service, and it's and yeah. it's cheap, you know. Uh, so well, it's not. Yeah, I mean, you can get a mobile phone for a tenner. Yeah, it's so just, so people can, yeah. uh, you know, get the technology. Yeah. But there's many other things that we're not doing. We should do. I mean, I would like to see it along the lines of if you get a, a service from Thames Reach, you can get onto the the team website and leave your comments as you would yeah. if you just use the hotel or right. You know, and you can say, you know, seven out of ten for the quality of the housing advice right. and five out of That's, ten for the quality of the employment advice. Oh my and gosh, you're here, talking my language. Here's a couple of ideas about yeah. how you might want to, you know, to yeah. improve the service, and we get that virtuous cycle of, yeah. you know, help Feedback. us to help us to do right. better. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank Not you very all. much no. for lunch and and, and and the tour. And uh, I Great really to have you over. Here. Yeah. Well, thank and, you. Um, if you can get us up to speed on the way we use social media, that would be oh, great. Oh, no, you guys are great. I mean, your your interaction with Alex and others is uh, yeah. has been teaching me and built what I do with the We Are Visible side oh, of thank you. Uh, the nonprofit. Uh, that's, you know, so. And when you say tonight, give him my, uh, give him my regards. Oh, I will. I will. Um, thanks, everybody.